Hey everyone, it's Dr. Hodges. I am walking and I have my fingers crossed that it will not start storming on me this morning. Um, today I wanted to tell you a little bit about a recent study that I read. I was doing some research for an article and I saw this um, study that came out actually in 2019 about um, genes that are specific to naturally thin people. And I want to share that information with you. So there was a study out of Cambridge and they took about 2,000 patients that were naturally thin, actually like a BMI that was like less than 20, but they did not have an eating disorder. They were just naturally thin. And then they also took a cohort of patients, um, about 2,000 that were obese, having a BMI over 30. And then their control was actually 10,000 normal, um, normal weight patients. And they looked at their genetic variability. There are a number of genes right now that have already been associated and found with weight and particularly with obesity, but this was the first time that they were specifically looking at, are there places on our genes, on our chromosomes, that could impart skinniness or thinness naturally? And this is what they found. The answer to that question is yes. Obesity and natural thinness are both inheritable traits. What they also found was that um, the, the thin genes did not have a lot of genetic variability, meaning there wasn't a wide fluctuation, whereas um, with the obese genes, there was a wide fluctuation. Um, especially the um, more obese patients get. And so what that also shows is that they had created an equation to kind of say, what is somebody, based on somebody's genes, what is their genetic risk for being obese or thin or having a normal BMI? And what they found is that the more genetic variability, especially in some of these loci or spaces on their genes, the greater the chance that you're you being overweight. Ooh, one second. Long guy. And so, what does this mean for you and I? Unfortunately for some folks, the deck is kind of stacked against them because if you have a lot of genetic variability, that means that you have a lot of different chances or opportunities for something to occur. If you don't have a lot of variability, that means the chances for something to occur are going to be a little bit lower. So does that mean that if you have some of these genes um, that could impart or put you at a higher risk for obesity, does that mean that you're destined to be obese? No, it does not. I think that's the other thing. There are a number of different factors that are in play. Clearly genes are going to be one component of them. Um, and it actually plays a very big role in your weight. Um, but what are some things that you can do that maybe could kind of help some of this predisposition? For instance, um, alcoholism, it runs in my family. Um, that's an inheritable trait, but I'm not an alcoholic. Heart disease, high cholesterol also runs in my family. That's a genetic inheritable trait, but I don't have high cholesterol. So just because you might have a little bit greater risk for something, it doesn't mean that it has to happen. So as I was looking at some more, so that should give you some hope. So um, I was then looking at what are some things that thin people might be doing that are different on a whole. And when I say thin, I, again, I mean people with a BMI 21 or less. Um, what are some things that they're just doing on a regular basis that might be different than the general population. And again, this is what the study showed. Number one, patients who were naturally thin or who were thinner typically would have parents who were thinner. And so I think that that kind of speaks to a larger issue that's facing our nation today about um, access to food, access to nutritional food, nutritious foods, food deserts, um, and um, your ability to 
not just have access to good food, but to consistently eat those good foods, things that are not highly processed. They found that not only um, were thin people, sorry about that, this is what I found. I had to um, stop the video for a second because I was on a really busy, loud high, um, not highway street. So this is what I found that thin people would naturally, oh my goodness, this is what happens whenever I go walk early in the morning. <laughs> Everybody's getting their lawn done. Um, so what I found was this. When you have a thin patient, a lot of them have a tendency to make sure that they're moving much more unconsciously, meaning um, instead of sitting, they will stand. Instead of taking an elevator, they'll take the stairs. There's also, a, oftentimes, they're a bit more fidgety. Um, and so all of these different little movements can add up over the long term. So for instance, whenever I was um, in that surgery moratorium last year and I wasn't able to operate, I was doing my telemedicine from my bedroom actually. And I found that on any given day, I would barely get in 600 steps. Whereas in a typical day, I might get in several thousand before I even would go for my, my walk and my exercise. And so that was very telling to me and very eye-opening because it really showed to me the importance of all these little movements that we do every day that, that we take for granted. So I know a lot of folks that have those Apple watches or Fitbits or any one of those little wearable devices. And a lot of times whenever you're wearing those, like every 50 minutes or so, it'll buzz or vibrate and say, time to get up, time to move. I encourage you, if you are wearing one of those things, and especially if you're working from home, you need to get up, you need to move, you need to be moving for at least five minutes. Because what you're trying to do is mimic, like when you're in the office and you're getting up to go to somebody's cubicle or going to get a cup of coffee, walking from your car in the parking lot to the building, walking back. You're trying to emulate all those little movements. And so, and that's also why whenever patients might have different surgeries or certain injuries and they're kind of um, immobile for a while, not only are they at a high risk for developing blood clots, but it's not uncommon for them to gain some weight because they just are not moving at all and God made us to move. So I think kind of in summary, what are some of the things that I've learned from this research? Number one, yes, thinness and obesity, both of those are inheritable traits. Number two, you're not a lost cause. We can do this. Might it be a little bit more difficult for some people and easier for others? Absolutely. Unfortunately though, that's everything in life. Um, number three, Try to emulate some of the things that naturally thin people might do. Try to incorporate more fruits, vegetables, high fiber foods into your diet. Those naturally help you from a cardiovascular standpoint, but then also they naturally keep you feeling fuller longer. Not to mention, I mean, it, like I said, it helps to decrease your risk for heart attack and cardiovascular disease. Um, also, um, naturally thin people, they typically will have higher NEAT, meaning um, they have much more movement throughout the day that is outside of an exercise um, period. But also what they found is that naturally thin people, on average, would exercise up to three times a week, and they had been doing that for a number of years. So, you know, everything starts with the first step. If you did not come from a family, that um, had good eating habits. Is there a risk that you're gonna have difficulty with your eating habits? It is, but it's never too late to learn the right types of foods that you can eat, good ways to prepare them. We have tons of recipes on my website. Veritastic is a great app that has a bunch of recipes. I don't want you to think that you're relegated to kale and quinoa. Although you can prepare those in different ways and they taste pretty good. Um, and so I just encourage you guys, um, take the first step in your health. 
It doesn't matter if you um, are overweight and you're thinking about surgery, you've had surgery, you don't want surgery, but you think you need a little bit of help, take the first step in getting a little bit of education about nutrition, about movement, about exercise, and you'll be well on your road to success. Hope that this, got, this helped you guys. Bye.